Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to, let's see, this is number one, two, three, four, five, number six in the Jacques Sarban series. These are the premium fountain pen ink collection, standard full line inks um, that were sent to me. The samples were sent to me by Goulet Pens. And uh, in the USA, they're exclusively available there at Goulet. And there are a few other places uh, other countries where you can get these. So today we're doing this beautiful green. It's called Vert Amazon and I can't wait to show you. It's just it, just really really pretty. So let's jump right in. Okay uh, before we start this is the Bond Travel Gear 68 GSM Tamoy River Paper Journal um, and it's been working out so good as an ink journal. It's a very good place to start. So that's where we're going to start today. <laughs> right in here. So I've got it in the broad nib right up to this point here. And like I said, you can get these at Goulet Pens, two mils for $2.25, 50 mil bottle for $28. And you can also buy a set of the 10 samples, right around $20 or so from them, so that you can try each of the 10 colors. And we've been going one by one through them. We've got four left and they're just amazing inks. This one, uh, in this broad nib, it took about 40 seconds to dry. Okay, and I wasn't seeing a lot of shading yet, but I think we see a little bit here and there, so we won't give up on that yet. Here in the um, 1.5 millimeter Goulet stub, we get a kind of a, it brightens the ink. It's, it's very gorgeous in that stub. 30 seconds to dry. And I just liked how it looked a lot. I saw some variation, which would could be called shading right in there, the tops of the A's and around the, the bottoms here are lighter. And so that was nice. And then in the fine nib, it was 25 seconds to dry, went back in and tested and at 20, it was still smearing. So my impressions, my first impressions were that it's just a yummy green, just a nice combination of being bright enough and saturated enough because a lot of times when uh, a green is bright enough for me it's too light you know it's just not saturated enough but that's not the case with this one plus it's got that really nice flow that all of these has been having so we get to see kind of what's going on inside with the chromatography and it, it, it is totally movable but look at all that kind of lime green so it does have a lot of brightness but then at the top, we get the darker green and you can really see the color coming in. So let's look at what it did in the bath test. And um, those of you who've been around know that my bath tests are completely submerged, 20, 20 minutes, and then I take it out and dry it. And it is a very typical fountain pen ink, uh, this one. Uh, like the other two recent ones have cleaned right out. But before that, we were getting some of these the black one, the gray one, and the brown one uh, had a little bit of uh, resistance. So now we've got three that had no, virtually no water resistance. And that's fine. It's just good to know, that's all. Oh, and yesterday, or the last ink that we did was the orange one. That was the orange uh, right here. That one got an A in the clean out. Absolutely no problems cleaning it out, as we could probably predict by how it acted in the water test. And I would expect that out of this one too, which is very good because we're doing a very light ink next and <laughs> I would hate to have any remnants in the pen, so. Okay, so let's go ahead and push this aside now and we'll start looking at other paper samples, starting with Rhodia, okay? And uh, we'll ignore that side just for the moment. This is Rhodia 80 GSM dot grid paper. It was almost dry at 25 seconds. I'm still not seeing a lot of shading here, but I see a little bit of variation in that broad nib, but that lays down a lot of ink. And I'm just, and I notice that my stub nib is just a little bit drier. So um, I do see more variation. And I don't know if that's related to that fact or just because of the way the stub is, you know, spreading that ink out or what. But I do see some shading there, not much. Uh, 30 seconds to dry in the stub. <laughs> Very strange. Okay, well, it probably was going to take 30 in the broad nib too. Um, I just, sometimes I just give up on those and because I, I don't really worry about that. I have my blotter paper around. So in the fine nib, <laughs> I think I just forgot to write down 25 because 
that would I always do five second intervals unless I'm really frustrated about it so that would have been 25 I'm sure and I made a note that it's a very good ink to paper match at the end we'll do some comparisons you probably got to see that I did some more green but I'd rather do that uh, right before we get on to the comparison panel so we could just uh, at least get our CVS caliber paper looked at here now this is an inexper uh, inexperienced inexpensive paper 5x7 notebook from CVS caliber which kind of behaves kind of like a I was going to say demented, but not demented, not demented, but, a, you know, not quite like Tamoy River paper, of course, but it is thin and it is very, very uh, good for holding the ink without bleed through. So in that regard, it compares. Okay, in the, our broad nib, it was almost dry at 30 seconds. We aren't getting any shading at all on there. And then very little shading, actually, in the stub nib on this paper, but I can see it some. And it was going to be a little bit more than 30 seconds to dry. Actually, I think that was the case there, too. You could see it. Well, I could see a little smear. So let's call it 35, probably, to be completely dry. And then in the fine nib, 25 seconds uh, to dry. And still looking nice and saturated. It doesn't wipe out or wimp out on us at all. Um, and I just think this was a very good, another very good um, ink to paper match, which is not always the case. So, okay, let's look at the back of these now. We have just ordinary ghosting on the CVS caliber. And then, let's see, on the back of the Rhodia, oops, well, we have to look back on the orange, but you could probably see around it to see that there's a little ghosting, but it's normal. And I'd like to keep this available because we are going to look at the comparison next, but I'll keep it right there. Okay, and on the back of the Tamoy River paper, I expect it would be just ordinary too. Yeah, there's nothing to really uh, worry about there. If you're like me, I'm not really bothered with that by, by that. Uh, this is the 52 GSM Tamoy River paper, and this is just where I went with an ink syringe and did a nice little splatter. And it did seep through the back, but that's real thin paper, and and it was on heavily, and I just thought that looked really pretty. That's a good demonstration of what the color looks like. It's it's a gorgeous, rich color. So right before we go to our comparison panel uh, tiles, let's look at what I did in the Rhodia uh, little booklet here. Now this is a little bit difficult because. None of these are actually a match or anything, but I wanted to see how today's ink compared to four of the ones that I have. One is my Blackstone Dane Tree Green, which I have in a little bottle. So I put each one in a glass nib. So we aren't comparing apple to apple. So you'll have to keep that in mind because the glass nib kind of meets its stride somewhere around here each time. Once we get into the sentence part, you can kind of see what it would look like in a medium nib. But when it first starts to write, it's quite dark, even up here. So we got to keep those things in mind, but I really enjoyed doing this. And it does show me that uh, Dane Tree Green comes across quite a bit darker in a nib. And uh, KWZ Green number 5, to me, comes across quite a bit lighter. Uh, just generally speaking, it's it's much more green like this, kind of, you know, not not quite so uh, oh, uh, saturated or dark in, in a way. And then Monteverde Yosemite Green, then we, we're getting into a more complex ink that has that blue in it. And we'll look at, at the uh, chromatography type um, display of that in a minute, and you'll see why. It still looks green, and it looks really good in the nib portion here. But um, it's a good deal different than this ink today's. Okay, then, oh, I couldn't resist putting uh, the Diamine Magical Forest. I can't wait to, to review this one. Um, I've got two of the Diamine Shimmer inks that I want to review. One is, um, let's see, one is Diamine Golden Ivy, and the other is this one, Magical Forest, from two different pen friends have shared these inks with me. And I thought this looked really nice. In fact, it kind of, 
I know it's a shimmer ink, but I thought this was the most similar in the nib to me. And it's still a little darker, and we have to think about the fact that it was a shimmer ink. Let's see if there's anything I can... Yeah, it, it really is. It really shimmered a lot. So I don't know how use the, useful this will be, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you anyway. It's the kind of thing I do all the time for, for myself, just to see, you know, well, it, how much like this are some of the ones I have already. It kind of slows me down on purchasing and on, you know, getting too crazy, but yet at the same time, sometimes it reveals how unique an ink is. So let's now move on to the, um, well, the comparison panel. I think that's going to be fun. It's just gorgeous. I mean, there's so many pretty greens here. And this is all because of you guys, really. And, and okay, some of them I've purchased. But on this particular panel, <laughs> I, I don't know that I purchased any of these except maybe the Tasha Midori, but that may have come right in an ink flight. So thank you very much to everybody who's over these uh, last two years sent ink samples. So here we are with our ink of the day right in the middle. Vert Amazon. It's gorgeous. It's a dark green. It's saturated. Um, and it's just amazing. Now, side by side you see how that looks with blackstone daintree green it looks like it would be almost the same but daintree green has that red sheen and it definitely appears darker in the nib you know when you get even when you get down to where that glass nib was almost done um you know and, and was as light it as it was going to get and i guess we have to compare it to the fine nib it's still darker so i thought that was interesting Whoops, I can tell that my husband forgot what I was going to be doing. I went and told him I was going to do the video, and we have doors closed in between, but I can hear hammering. I'm sorry about that. But he's just, oh, he's making such good progress on our closet and a project he's doing. I, I don't have the heart to get upset, so. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this is just, like, making my brain freeze because I love this this color group so much there's the Monteverde Yosemite green down at the bottom here and the, on the right side and it's complex you can see it's got blue coming out and green like blue green and it's it's no wonder that that one looked different in a nib and then Karen Dash vibrant green I felt like was really comparable to the Yosemite so I just kept with this one for my comparison <laughs> I can hear that hammering. Okay, and then Diamine November Rain is so much darker, I can tell what it will do in a nib. I mean, I can just tell right away that it'll be quite a bit darker. And that's not a bad thing. It's got all kinds of red sheen. See that sheen? Oh my gosh. So, and that, that makes a difference too when you get it in a nib. But I had fun putting this together here. And then Tasha Midori, it's... Um, I don't know what to say about it because it, it looks similar on the surface, but I know I remember that looking different and I just didn't have, I had teeny tiny bit left, like enough to do art with, but not enough to even stick the nib of the glass pen in there. And then Diamine Sherwood Green, I used to have only a little of that, but I just recently won a bottle of that. That's pretty. Uh, it's a little different. And it's got some red sheen, too, that you may even be able to see on the surface. And then Lamy Green, I feel like, is totally in a different class. It's, it's much less saturated than Vert Amazon, but it's pretty. Okay, now let's look at my extras here. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Okay, KWZ Green number 5. That's kind of a, what I'd call a primary color green there. Very pretty. And we did get... Yeah, we got that into a nib, and we just saw that it was quite a bit lighter than our ink of the day. But it's pretty, and it's, it's kind of like a traditional green. So, what's next? Okay, I wondered about this one. This is Jair Bon Ancre Classic Lier Sauvage. And it's lighter, and it's much more of a kind of a kindergarten green, too. I had another one. Oh, okay. I made two of those. That's silly. Okay. So Pelican Edelstein Adventure. Ad oh, I knew how to say that, but I forgot. So here it is. 
you can read it and I can't say it. So it's complex. It kind of, to me, kind of belongs with these that are, that have the complex inner chromatography and everything. But that was a gorgeous ink too. I don't, there aren't very many inks I don't like guys, but <laughs> okay. Private Reserve Avocado shows us what happens when we get into a totally different class. It's a different color. It's um, much deeper, much different uh, shade. So, and then, oh, uh, Pelican Edelstein Olivine. Okay, again, with another one that is much more, <clears throat> not olive, but darker and totally out of the ballpark. And then we have one more. We have the Diamine Golden Ivy. That's another one that I can't wait to have a chance to um, profile. I'm, I think there's going to be a Chris's Choice uh, series pretty soon. And I think I'm going to go for some shimmer inks because I know people have been waiting to see some of these. And I've been waiting too. And this would be, this is just pretty. It's got all that red sheen and gold shimmer and woo. But anyway, I still felt like that face to face with that one was kind of in the same category in a way. And certainly it is with the Daintree Green, so it's probably going to look darker in a nib than Vert Amazon. But Vert, Vert Amazon, just such a good behavior like the rest of the ones in this series. Okay, so the next question is just what did I think of the ink? And I, I really like it. I like all of these so far. Um, very impressive, bright, saturated float. Whoops, saturated. <laughs> I, I misspelled saturated, but I know what I mean there. So I liked it for its brightness, saturation, and flow, and the fact that I could tell it's well behaved. It's going to clean out of my pens easily. There's no water resistance, but that doesn't bother me too much. Um, really doesn't bother me at all. Um, hopefully nobody ever spills water on a letter I write because it'll be gone, and I'll just have to, they'll have to ask me what I said, and I probably won't remember, but <laughs> other than that, um, no problem. Let's see. Saturation. I gave it very high, like eight and a half. Flow, eight. Uh, shading, I gave it a three because I thought it was pretty low. It's probably going to be much better in a flexible nib or a vintage nib that has a little bit of flex. I didn't see bleeding or feathering. Dry time was average. Hmm, I'm saying here that I didn't see sheen, halo, or shimmer. Let's see. No, I really didn't. Not, not in my experience anyway. And even on that one paper, which fell down on the floor, so I can't get that. Okay, overall I gave it an eight. I think it's a, a solid choice for a green. Definitely won't harm your pens, you know. It's, it's safe, well-behaved, um, pretty. It has the beauty, but then I, in the middle, of course, I put the dollar sign because I recognize there are other choices in, in uh, Diamine, Tasha, um, you know, Monteverde. There's different brands where we can get uh, a lower per mil price for sure. But still, this is a really, really nice ink. So let's see um, what happens when we try the Nick Stewart technique. <clears throat> let's do that. Bring over our water. And I'm going to use two of the ones from this series today uh, to do it. I guess that's what I've been doing. And our last one dried nice and came out pretty good, I think. <laughs> it's funny looking, but still, I thought that was really fun. Whoops, I guess we can have more of the viewfinder here. I like this saying. It came in a candy that I, I ended up eating the other day. It said, throw kindness around like confetti. And it was Molly B from Kansas. It was one of those Dove candies. I thought that was so cool. Okay, so... Oh, this is a neat thing. I found this little thing for 50 cents at the thrift store and it fits all three of my review pens. Real easily too. Actually, the, the Lamy is probably the tallest so it <laughs> probably should have gone in first, but so neat. And I'm gonna leave the stub in there, but, but it was a Clinique bag and I just took off the little, uh, you can see where it was, but it doesn't matter. I just took off the little branding because I didn't care for the, you know, didn't care about that. Okay, we got that. Our ink of the day and our secondary ink is the yellow one that will be next, actually. 
Okay, I need to just get started, I think. Here we go. Okay. Hmm. I don't know why I wanted to start here, but I guess we will just keep going left to right. <laughs> okay, I'm really, really excited to see what this will do. Uh, in the chromatography, it behaved pretty, pretty normally, and it didn't do much, but you never can tell what's going to happen when you get on here. Um, this is watercolor paper. <clears throat> and then I, I can put in the description what it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. What? Oh, okay. Okay. That's interesting. Very different. Took right over, but that's okay. <clears throat> oh, now I, now I just want to see what happens when I blob the other color, which is kind of a yellow. So let's do that. Let's see whether we can get any kind of Ah, that's what I was afraid of. It doesn't really mix. Oh, but it will. It will because there's a lot of water there. Let's see. Make sure I don't... I don't want to contaminate it the day before I <laughs> review it. Let's see. Okay. It's kind of nice to have two mil and two mil in case I did have an accident. <clears throat> they gave me uh, double samples because it usually takes me three mils to get a good, complete review. Oh, this is neat. You know, it doesn't really look like what we normally do, but I still like it. Okay. Well, usually I come in down at the bottom just to give it like a, a line. This is the Nick Stewart technique. I don't think I mentioned that today. Only thing is, if he saw it, he might not <laughs> want me to say that because I'm not like a student or anything yet, but... I'm practicing, practicing, practicing. One of these days, I might graduate. Okay. Let's do the bottom. This isn't at all turning out the way mine usually come out, so that's cool. Something different today. I actually think I want to try a thicker paintbrush. The one, okay, I'll just... Just want to try this and see what happens. There we go. I like that. <clears throat> At least start it that way and maybe bring in a pen. I don't want to overwhelm it, so. I don't know if we'll get any movement or mixing or anything, but we'll find out. That's one thing about it. I just need to be brave enough to try new things and uh, find out what happens, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay. How about... Wow, it's just not what I envisioned when I thought... You know, usually I get something that sort of resembles a sky and trees and... <clears throat> Neat, we're getting some kind of blue mixed in there. Oh, I like that. I like what's happening there. Let's see. Let's do some more of that. <clears throat> Whoops. Well, a little carried away because it kind of gives the illusion of, of a back of background shrubbery and so forth. So that's kind of neat. And I like how it's mixing with the green that's already there. I like, oh, whoops. <laughs> For the most part, I like that, but I, I get carried away there. I like it more where it's real subtle. Let's see. Off to the to the right there. Huh. This is always fun. I didn't put any green down there. Oh, there. There it is. <laughs> I think it's just about done. I don't know why I'm dragging my feet here. Let's see if there's enough water. Yeah, we got enough water there. Do a few things. We're actually having a nice cool day today in South Texas. Another cool day. We're going to go back into the 90s, so we're really enjoying it today while it lasts. <clears throat> huh. Well, gee. That's an odd looking picture. But I think that shows us the inks are really pretty. And we'll see how they dry. We'll look at it next time. Okay, and then I did prepare for us 
what's next, um, I, I went ahead and just put on a CVS notebook the order that I'm going to finish them in. Um, I tried to vary it just slightly at least. I realized we have two blues left, but next will be this yellow. I guess it's yellow. It's quite rich of a uh, of a yellow though. It, it kind of reminds me of one of the Birmingham inks. So this will be next. And then we'll have the blue astral, the violet, and then the blue menu. Um, so we've got a teal that looks like a teal sort of. And then we've got a bright deep blue coming and the violet. So that'll that'll like energize us right before and then the very end will be another blue. And then we can start hitting some of these inks that we've been waiting a long time to see. So, I mean, we waited a long time to see these. That's because we're just so blessed on this channel with ink everywhere. Ink, ink, ink. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, I would love to hear what you think of today's and how, how does this fall into your um, inky scene. Uh, for me, I have a bottle to use with Blackstone Daintree Green, and it's sort of in this category, and I planned, this is a 30 mil bottle, I plan to use that one up, so I'm not out hunting for a green, and also I have several samples where I've already reviewed the inks, but I have enough left to write with for Christmas, and so on, and that awesome, awesome uh, uh, fact that I have a couple of really nice shimmer inks that we can review bef hopefully before Christmas because there's two green ones. Where's that other one? Oh shoot. Huh. Well we just looked at it. Magical Forest. Okay so we've got the Magical Forest and the Golden Ivy green and so you can tell I'm kind of looking forward to that like um what I'm going to use for Christmas cards and so on. But let me know what you think of this one and how it fits into your overall um, ink collection, your greens. I think it's a really solid choice if you didn't already have one and you especially wanted something that was well behaved and nicely saturated and flows like a charm. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.